David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you one of the most recent releases from Penlux in their Delgado series, and that would be the Delgado AU Ployea. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'm going to show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Itoya, who are the U.S. distributors for Penlux, for providing what you will be seeing today for review. Penlux is a company based out of Taiwan, and the theme of this pen has some Taiwanese connections, which I will discuss here in a bit. The pen arrives in this box right here, uh, with the company name peeking through this slot. That slides off, and then the lid lifts up, and we have a few things in here. There is a use and care guide with some easy to understand graphics. Then there is a certificate of authenticity on this really nice debossed card stock. And then there's something here that I, I have commented on in previous Penlux reviews. There's some important information on this translucent piece of plastic. It basically explains that while you can remove the nib and feed, if you attempt to remove the section or the piston knob, it can potentially damage your pen beyond repair. Uh, putting it on this plastic is a smart move because it's different. Um, we tend to not pay much attention to the documentation that comes with our pens, at least for the most part I do sometimes, but having this important information presented in a different manner made me stop and take a look at it. Uh, and this is very important information. So I'll continue to give Penlux props for uh, presenting info in a way that gets the attention of customers. At least it got my attention. And then we have the pen. This is the Penlux Masterpiece Delgado Euploiea. Now, Euploiea is a genus of milkweed butterflies, which are generally dark in coloration, which is why they are commonly called crows. Uh, yes, it's a bit strange to have butterflies called crows, but that's how it is. They are actually poisonous due to the milkweed and other toxic plants that they feed on. In Taiwan, there's a rare species called the purple crow. Um, it is a rare species of butterfly which migrates in the winter. Uh, well, a lot of them migrate, but it's a rare species. Um, as soon as the weather gets cold, they actually seek shelter in a warm, sheltered valley in southern Taiwan in a place appropriately called the Purple Butterfly Valley. Uh, there, hundreds of thousands of these butterflies can be seen. I've seen something similar in person before. Uh, in Pacific Grove, California, which is right near Monterey and Carmel, there is a monarch butterfly sanctuary uh, where the butterflies migrate. Uh, it's pretty cool to see. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same for the Taiwanese species, but for the monarchs, the butterflies that you see aren't the same ones which will eventually migrate back. A monarch might live only about a month, so the generation of butterflies which return to the area are like seven or eight generations removed from the ones who were there last year. And scientists still are, they really aren't sure how that they know to come back to the exact same spot to wait out the winter. Uh, it's kind of amazing. But enough butterfly talk, let's get back to this pen. Um, I feel Penlux pulled off the theme of this pen well with the black, light purple, and amber resin used here. It does bear a resemblance to the inspiration behind the name. Uh, it kind of re resembles a koi fish as well, I feel. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it's wide and rounded. This transitions into the clip band and the clip. Um, I like this clip. It kind of looks similar to what you'll find on Leonardo pens, but a little bit wider. Uh, the clip is a bit stiff. Uh, the wheel does help it work with thinner materials, but for anything thicker, you'll need to pinch it a bit in order to help it along. The cap angles up uh, until about the last inch or so where it straightens out, and then you have the band. It's plated in rose gold, as the rest of the trim on this pen. Uh, the company logo on the band is stamped, which is something I always like to see. The lettering looks really crisp. Uh, and I feel that the rose gold trim matches well with the overall color palette of the resin used in the remainder of this pen. There is a medium-sized angled step down to the barrel, which tapers down at a fairly even angle until you reach the end where there is a band signifying the beginning of the piston knob, which tapers down at a slightly larger rate, and the end of that knob is rounded. The cap twists off in just under two rotations, and underneath we have this very nice looking nib. 
Uh, it's a stainless steel Yovo number no. six nib engraved with the Penlux logo. The nib is plated in rose gold to match the rest of the trim on the pen. I think that was a good decision to do that. If it was a silver colored nib, I felt it would have clashed a bit with the overall color scheme of the pen. The nib is available in fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 stub. Uh, it's also available in a 14 karat gold flex nib as well as 18 karat gold nibs in fine and medium. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with an angled flare and rises slightly until you get to a step up to the threads, a straight portion, and another small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the angle of this section isn't too steep. I like the girth of it. I feel it's size appropriate for this pen. And overall, I'm able to maintain a firm, comfortable grip. Uh, the cap does post, and it does post securely. Uh, the cap is fairly light, and I don't feel it backweights the pen or throws off the balance, so if you are fond of posting your caps, then this is a pen where you could certainly do that. And the angled cap band really minimizes the sharpness that some pens can have against your hand at that transition. Uh, since I mentioned the piston knob earlier, you could deduce this is a piston filler. Um, I do find the piston mechanism to be smooth and operate well. Uh, with this being a rather large pen, it has a decent ink capacity. Now, you know, I need to figure out what ink I'll put in this for the writing sample. Uh, for me, some pens, they feel like they're just made for a specific color of ink. Like if I have a purple pen, sometimes it just feels wrong to use something other than a purple ink. For this particular resin, you can go in a number of directions. A lavender or purple would look nice, uh, but then also maybe a lighter or even darker brown might work as well. The Penlux Masterpiece Delgado AU Ployea is available from a number of retailers and sells for $136. I feel that's a very reasonable price for what this pen brings to the table. Um, I like the size and shape. Um, it feels very nice in the hand. Uh, it's a very well-crafted piston filler, and I feel that the choice of resin matches the theme of the pen well. Um, if you've never tried a Penlux, uh, this is something worth taking a closer look at. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Penlux Delgado Euploia. Uh, in regard to a couple of other Penlux models, um, here it is with the Delgado Beta, which was the last uh, Delgado model that I reviewed. Uh, and then here it is with a Masterpiece Grande, and this was called the Wave. And then here it is with a Lamy Safari, and this was in the uh, petrol version. In regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Twisby VAC 700. Uh, here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. And then finally, here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear. And this was called the uh, uh, the Blue Cobra version, which was available through uh, Gold Spot pens, I believe. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with that Safari. And here it is with the Twisby VAC 700. And here it is with the Sailor Pro Gear. Here we go with the writing sample for the Penlux Delgado. And this is the Euploia, which is spelt E U P L O E. A, and it's very hard for my mouth to say. Uh, this is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink I decided to go with was from Seitz Kreuznach, which is S-E-I-T-Z Kreuznach. And this is their Dark Orchid. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, I think it's a, a nice kind of saturated, darker orchid that I really like. Um, it's not quite as dark and saturated as something like Leonardo Purple. Uh, 
Um, I also considered this ink from Ferris Wheel Press, the little, I'll call it Robinia. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, that uh, I, I thought that the coloring matched well with this pen, but I'm not a huge fan of super light inks. And so that's why I decided to go with the uh, Seiss Korshnak. This is what the Seiss Korshnak bottles look like. Um, they're really cool. It kind of has like a medicine bottle look to it or almost like a flask. Um, these uh, inks really aren't available from that many retailers and here in the US at least. Um, I think that basically I ended up purchasing some through Amazon, but they're nice inks and what really sold them uh, for me is this cool bottle. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I find this number six Yovo nib to be very smooth, um, that it's more on the smoother side with less feedback for this particular nib. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation, not a ton. And I do find that the ink flow on this one is decent in regard to reverse writing. It's a little scratchy. In a regard to some fast writing, there's no issue whatsoever. Okay, so there we have the Pinlux Delgado Euployea. Um, I think for the price, it's a really good pen, and I like the coloring of this with the rose gold trim. If you've never uh, experienced a Pinlux pen, uh, then this is something that it's definitely worth taking a look at. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.